have one other question. If you could comment about the Lirans that you were speaking about earlier, how they left their knowledge behind before they left Memoria. Yes. How do we access that information, or where do we look for it? Or is it just in plain sight, or is it well, crystals? Or yeah, some of it was with crystals. Um, some of it was passed on into Atlantis with those from the Lemurian civilization who decided to incorporate themselves into the Atlantean society, um, that information and knowledge was, was passed along. Um, also, a lot of the Lyrian information is being held and stored with the dolphins and the whales. All right. they, uh, the Lyrian civilization that was part of Lemuria uh, worked also, as we said, with the Mer people. The Mer people created magnificent symphonies underwater and worked with tone and sound and stored a great amount of knowledge and wisdom in in the underworld. All right, within uh, the stones and rocks and uh, the sand that exists at the bottom of the ocean. It's all infused in in that structure as opposed to the crystal that you're getting above ground. So a lot of that is stored within the ocean and your sea creatures, your sea life can also tap into those frequencies. So um, they're holding the knowledge and wisdom as well. And that is not communicated so much through your working with those underground stones, uh, underwater stones and such, but rather you connecting more with nature. And the more you connect with nature, you're connecting with the collective consciousness of all those sea creatures who are holding that wisdom and knowledge as well. Now, some of the Mer people also went on and, and were working with those in Atlantis. Um, they worked with both civilizations. Uh, and when Atlantis fell, many of them simply went on to another realm. They went back to some of their home worlds, just as many of the Lyrans did. But all of that information uh, can be accessed in the Akashic Records. You can all start accessing it, receiving it directly. You don't have to have a trinket or a totem or any of that stuff. The hard part for you all will be trusting what you get because it will seem like a fantasy. It will seem like a fantastic story. But it's not really real. That's what you tell yourselves. We say, what is reality? It's an illusion. And there are many, many versions of the truth. All right? You're welcome. So, we wanted to talk about the second part of your blueprint. All right, we talked a bit about the pre-shift. We're going to talk a bit about the post-shift. So, as you go through this process of ascension and you slip into a new game, there's a whole other blueprint that you all have set up for yourselves because the rules of the game have changed. And one of the things that many of you on this planet will start to do is to either work with other members of the galaxy through exchange programs, through cultural exchange programs, <laughs> or many of you will be teachers. Many of you will teach other beings how to go through the process of integration. And right now, that seems like such an outrageous statement because you think, how in the world am I going to teach another being how to go through integration? I don't know anything myself. But we promise you, as you expand your awareness and you shift into that expanded state, you're going to remember more. You're going to remember other aspects of yourself, other lifetimes, and you will realign with some of those systems to go and share your wisdom with them. Um, you know, literally, you will hold galactic classrooms. Because those aspects of yourself, remember, the ones that sent you here as a representative, they weren't able to integrate. So you're going to work with them to say, this is how it's done. You're doing it in the densest place possible on the planet with the most emotions. You really are doing it in the hardest place ever. So if you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. So you'll be working with them and sharing information. Um, and then there are others of you who will simply work with the planet, work with Earth, and, and explore. Now, for those of you who are going off-world, um, 
this won't be your first time uh, playing this game, so to speak. Most of you who are deciding to, to be galactic teachers, this was a huge part of your blueprint and why you agreed to the assignment in the first place, why you decided to come down to Earth so that you could then be, uh, ascend and become a galactic teacher. And many of you uh, have a lot of attachments and alignments with the Pleiades system because remember, we are teachers and guardians. So you've spent a good deal of time in our system in order to learn how, learn the skill sets of how to be a, a teacher, how not to get activated when your student, as it were, is in pain, trauma, grief, strife, and to hold compassion for them and to honor their free will to say you're a creator being, you're not a victim. And there are other options. We, we hate to see your grief, but there are other options when you choose to, to view them. So, as you start thinking about what it is you want to create, we suggest that you start dreaming bigger. None of you are dreaming big enough. You all need to start dreaming bigger and bigger and bigger. And not waiting till after 2012 to envision what kind of world you want to live in. Create it now. How do you want to work with your community? How do you want to work with your immediate society? How do you want to work with your family, your friends, your co-workers? Start there. Start on the small scale. All right? And, and kind of try it out. See what works. See what doesn't work. But dream bigger. See, see how you want your day structured. What would you like society to look like? What would you like the planet to look like? How would you like to interact with the galaxy? When you leave your body at night, many of you are on councils and committees. And when you get to the higher realms, by the way, you're going to hear everything as a council and a committee because remember, you're part of a collective. <laughs> so each of you, or most of you, are on some sort of committee and you're f giving feedback on a daily basis about what's going on. You're giving the report about what it's like on Earth so that these other beings can learn. And that's going back to all of these different planets. So one of the things we want to do here is to give you a visualization for integration about calling different parts of yourself back to yourself. Now, when we say that, we don't just mean other aspects of you that are off on another planet. We also mean other aspects of you which are on different timelines that are feeling separate and isolated and alone, that are cut off. That may mean that three-year-old version of you, all right, that got its hand slapped for putting it, putting it in the cookie jar, all right, and felt wounded. It may, may be that 15-year-old version of you that was rejected socially, and on and on and on. There's other versions of you, future versions of you that you have yet to encounter from your linear perspective that feel separate and isolated. And as you start to integrate these parts of yourself and as you start to invite them in, that's when you start to feel more and more connected and that you start to integrate your higher self into the vehicle, that expanded awareness into the vehicle. And that is what will bring that sensation of home here to you. You are calling all parts of yourself home and home right now is in this vehicle. So the first thing before we give you that is to remind you the importance of being grounded. Now, we, we talked about this uh, with most of you the other day, but for those who uh, weren't present or for those who may be listening to a recording, we'll talk about it again. We can express to you the importance of being grounded. If there is one thing that you can do for yourselves right now that will benefit you more than anything else, that is being grounded and being present. You've got to be connected to the body in order to do what you came here to do. As a safety mechanism, as a way of not feeling all the emotional distress on the planet, those of you who are sensitive aren't fully integrated into the cells. You're not connected with the body. You're half out of your body. So what you want to do is to integrate into the cell so that you can receive messages. 
so that you can hear your body talk. Your body gives you signals. It's the first place that the energetics are manifested. First they're manifested in your physical vehicle. And then when you don't pay attention there, you start projecting them out into the physical world. So your body will tell you immediately what is going on. When you're grounded, you can feel all those vibrations and sensations in the body and get clues and information much, much faster about what is happening at the subconscious level or at the conscious level for that matter. And then once you're grounded, being present, not drifting off to the past or worrying about the future, just simply being fully engaged with whatever it is that you're doing in the moment. That will also allow you to get this vibrational feedback so that you can make adjustments and changes. So the visualization that we like to give you is your soul's essence crossing across the galaxy through Alcyon, the central sun, picking up all the required records that you need along the way, entering into the Helio system, passing through Helios itself, picking up all the records it needs along the way, entering into Earth's atmosphere, entering down into the crown of your head, and this beautiful, radiant, golden light enters into one single cell of the body. And that beautiful golden light infuses itself into every single part of that cell at every single level. And as you breathe, that light grows brighter and brighter, stronger and stronger, until the cell cannot contain the light. And just as a star goes supernova, this energy bursts forth and into the next cell where the process repeats. And then it continues on into the next cell and the next cell until it has moved all the way through the body. And this brilliant golden light is your soul's essence, which you have completely and wholly infused into the physical vehicle. That's the grounding portion. You are fully connected and integrated into your body. You have full awareness of every sensation, every vibration that occurs within your vehicle. It is consciously recognized and that you can affirm. As you integrate this divine light, you restore the body to its original divine blueprint, to its perfected state, because the body is never ill, really. It is always in perfect balance and in perfect condition. Just that like that beautiful octahedron. It is always perfect. It is never distorted. Now, as you look at the body, those distortions in your belief systems create the illusion that the cell is somehow distorted. And so you project that and you manifest that. But really, truly, that cell is in perfect working order. And the more you can see yourselves as already being divinely perfect and holding that vision, the more the cells will realign themselves to that vision. If you're ill, you don't have to know what's wrong with you. You simply have to see yourself as being in perfect health, perfect well-being, perfect balance. And as you pulse that vibration, the body will match through the laws of attraction and reflection. It's why we tell you, you don't have to know any of the, the, the past lives, any of the blocks, any of the issues. All you have to do is pulse a new vibration and be present. How do you like the vibration? Do you want to create something different? It's not complicated. The distortions in the mind and the ego make it complicated. They make it very, very complicated. Take a deep breath. So we'd like to give you the visualization for the integration process. So we'd like for you to see in your heart center a beautiful octahedron. Now if you have trouble visualizing an octahedron, you can think of uh, a four-pointed four pointed base pyramid, all right? And then see another one and flip it upside down so the bases are touching. So you've got two points at each end. All right, that's your octahedron. 
So we want you to visualize this beautiful octahedron that's spinning. All right. We want you to see its brilliance, its divine perfection, just as it's a star in the evening sky. And as you breathe, visualize parts of yourself that may have been separate. Invite them in. Invite them to rejoin with you in expanded awareness, in connection, in harmony, in peace. See those pieces of you coming back and integrating into that octahedron, joining their little pieces of light with the overall light of the octahedron as it, as it shines like a star. And continue breathing, and with each breath in, that octahedron spins a bit faster, grows a bit brighter, and it retrieves all these other parts of yourself. And they're coming in from across the galaxy, perhaps from another part of the universe, from your childhood, from your teenage years, from your future to parallel versions of you which are undergoing stress and strife and feeling separate and isolated. And as you call all these parts of yourself back together, tune into your emotional state. Allow yourself to feel connected, to feel one with all things, with all the universe. Because in truth and reality, you are. You are never separate. You are never isolated. Never away from home. But you are refocusing that notion of where home is into your heart center, into this octahedron, which is the geometric pattern that will create the new template for the new physical vehicle. And this crystal, as it were, this octahedron, is where all the information about who you really are as a part of divine source energy is stored. And you are now activating all of that knowledge and wisdom so that you may retrieve it at will. You are divine light and love. You are whole and complete. You are one. And so it is. Take a nice deep breath for us. So that's a quick visualization that you can utilize to pull energy back in that you have let linger elsewhere for a while. So, any questions? Can you give that energy to other people? What you can do is give them uh, a sampling of that frequency, yes, by pulsing it out. Uh, as you hold it within yourself, you are the walking template. You are that frequency, and others can pick up on that frequency. Um, beyond sending it to them, um, there's not much you can do. They've, they've got to decide they want to step into that frequency. But we suggest that you do this on a, on a fairly regular basis, because you might find that there are new parts of yourself that have split off. Or there may be parts that have been pretty far out and just not ready to come back in. All right, so just see that all coming back to this center, this focus of you. Well, that's really all it is. It's a focus. All right, if you think of light shining into a crystal, white light, and once it hits that crystal, it's fractured. And then you see all the streams of the rainbow colors. This is what literally is happening with that fractured part of you. So what you're doing is bringing all these pieces back in so that it's pure white light. You're combining it all again. All right, so it's not fractured, it's not split off. Can that help with illnesses or belief systems? Absolutely. Can that fill in the gaps of all those? Can you visualize that? Will that help with that? It can, yes. Seeing yourself, as whole, and, yeah, seeing yourself as whole and perfect will help that. Because what will happen, especially with illness, as you see yourself as whole and perfect, the body responds. The body says, all right, well, now we're whole and perfect. So any cells that are misaligned will realign. 
you don't have to know what's broken as we said just simply see yourself as perfect it's shifting that perspective because what happens quite often is mo- as many of you reawaken you see yourselves as somehow being broken and there's lots to fix and lots to clear and you, you can get caught up in that trap that that perpetual mental state of I'm broken or I'm blocked and when you put your focus there you continue to create blocks and pieces of yourself that are broken right you're not necessarily moving out of that frequency you can get trapped there um, there can be benefit by by focusing on and say oh I have this block but you've got to you got to expand that awareness and say all right where's my part in co-creation and move out of it but too often you keep going back to the I'm broken I'm broken I'm broken script instead of I'm perfect I'm perfect I'm perfect so when you go there the body responds again you're projecting it and you're going to get that reflected back what may happen as you all start working with this and you say I'm perfect I'm whole because it's a very high vibration you may start activating some of those lower frequencies you may see all those parts of yourself that say oh no I'm not I'm not good enough that gets reflected back so you can start to integrate that and then you keep going back to that high thought I'm perfect I'm perfect I'm perfect and you get more and more that comes up and you just clear it you say all right here's this this belief why did I create it how is it of service to me I'm perfect I'm perfect I'm perfect see how that works it's not complicated just the distortions are complicated does that help Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Anything else? The shifting. Um, I feel like I have had uh, expanded awareness, but uh, does that does the shifting um, take a long time? Because it seems like you know it comes and it goes. It's like a it's a kind of a struggle. Or well, don't see it as a struggle. See, this no, is part no, of the natural no. process. Because what will happen? You'll hold a high expanded sense of awareness, and all your lower stuff gets triggered through the laws of entrainment so you drop out and then you say oh well right got to go back to the top so you get your frequency back up and you hold it for a little longer and then you drop out again mm-hmm. usually not as far because you're clearing and increasing your vibration eventually you'll stay up there all right so you're not going to drop out or if you drop it's just slight and that's part of the natural process um, you know if you will look at it there'd be big dips at the beginning and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller that's very very normal now there is something else we want to talk about here about um, uh, splitting focus all right splitting your awareness uh, as you move into the higher realms um, and this goes back to grounding in your body in part we wanted to talk about bilocation versus astral projection and how you retrieve and receive information all right because there is a bit of a difference and and what's coming is is a bit different many of you are used to doing astral projection you leave your body and go check things out to get information with this process of integration again with this game what you want to do is get in the body to do it you want access to all that information in your body you don't want to have to leave the vehicle you want the vehicle to receive that information so that can be a big change for many of you that you're not used to getting information while you're in the vehicle take a breath so for those of you who like to to meditate and then leave your body to go get information and to go to other worlds we encourage you to start staying in the body to get it try to work that way see yourself fully grounded and then ask for the information and rather than shoot out if you catch yourself say no I want to stay in and get it do you all understand what we mean have you all had this experience Yes. yes all right so the next thing you're going to start to do is you have a multi-dimensional state of awareness is by location which is a bit different so you will recreate another version of your body all right because you have a light body in the higher realms you can manipulate it much easier than you can manipulate your dense physical structure the body is really hard the one that you're in right now you have a hard enough time uh, shifting the vibration of it let alone splitting it and creating two so as you shift into the higher realms and this is you can do it in the fourth most of you are still kind of preparing yourselves um, and kind of getting accustomed to having these new abilities and new awarenesses that it's primarily a fifth dimensional activity 
But what you can do at that level is to project yourself in multiple places at once and to have multiple experiences at once. But in order to do that, you've got to get grounded in the vehicle. So we want you to start practicing that now instead of astral projecting out to get information, start getting it here in the body. When you're in the multidimensional state, holding multiple focuses is child's play. This is how all of you naturally operate. To hold one focus is very unusual. It's a unique game that you all play down here. That expanded part of yourself says, oh yes, the multidimensional multiple focus is no problem. That's, that's the way that it, everything works. You know, a kindergartner would know that. So you'll start working more and more with that as well. That you can be in two places at once. You can be present on the earth and then you can project yourself off into a planet in the Pleiades system. Or in the Orion system. This was something that 300,000 years ago you had the ability to do. And your ancestors did. All right, but as you got denser and denser, as you got trapped in that, it became impossible. You also have the records and information of how to do that in the genetic line. It's stored also in the earth records, but it is in the genetic line because your ancestors did it. It's there for you. And you can retrieve it at will. You can go into the libraries and get it. How do I bilocate? You can play around with it if you wish. Uh, there's also, uh, interesting, uh, we're seeing a lot of fear being generated in you all right now. So we want to nip that right in the bud. When we tell you, or when we suggest, that you go and experiment, there can be a bit of fear that gets generated in you all about you're going to do something wrong, you're going to step into the dark realms, you're going to play in things that you don't know about. You all know about all of this stuff. That higher self knows all about it. It's the ego that's afraid. So just be aware of that when you think about trying these new things. Are you activated? Are you experiencing fear? If you recognize that, fabulous. One more fear identified. One step closer to integrating it. Right, so just be aware of that. And there are, there's nothing off limits to you. The only limitations you have are the ones that you place on yourselves. No one else places a limit on you. That's all you. 100%. How does that feel? All the limitations that you're experiencing in your life, it's all you. So what if you drop them all? What if you let them all go? How would that feel? overwhelming to some of you we know that uh, that activates another fear but when you trust that you're divinely supported you can deal with that sense of overwhelm this is what you do this is what all other aspects of yourself do except for that version of you that's in the third dimension you know what it's like and as we said at the beginning this time that you're in this period of discovery is what is the unknown it's never happened before. And we tell you often we don't know what's going to happen because it's never been done before. You're doing it right now. And you're teaching the rest of us. So there's much gratitude on this side. We're very grateful. So thank you for your service. Questions? Is, is Abraham part of the Pleiades Collective? Um, n certainly not this one. Um, And not identified in the same way with the star system. There's another level and layer of identification. So we would say no. But remember, even as beings identify themselves as an individual, they're still part of a collective. So at some point, we're all connected. We're all part of the collective. Make sense? Can you talk a little more about the Arcturan system and the healing? aspect of it? Uh, we can talk a little bit about it. Uh, they work quite often with tone and, well, not quite often, all the time with tone and sound and specifically the language of light, which is beyond tone and sound. It's the frequencies of, uh, of light as well. Um, so there are beings on the planet right now who are working with Arcturans, who are bringing through the language of light. It is a potent healing modality, as we always say, the tone and sounds, one of the most potent, powerful healing modalities you have on the planet at this time. 
um, specifically working with the human voice. So as they work with the language of light, it is very quick, it is very, uh, very, very fast. It would sound like a recording that's um, fast forward to you. That's how you would perceive it. Encoded in this transmission, because it is light, you've got uh, literally, if you were to decipher it as a human being, you would get the words, you would get the sacred geometrical patterns, you would get the frequencies as they are formed into matter. Just as um, all things have a base structure, you would see that. You'd see it in the basic building blocks, so you would see the geometric patterns, some of them being more complex as they're built one on top of another. Um, and you would also hear the tone. You would hear the vibration of the matter itself. They work, as we said, with many other star systems working with disputes, helping beings to heal, to repair physical structures, to repair planetary structures for that matter. Um, they work with uh, beings to teach this very skill so that they can work with their own planetary bodies. That's also something that happens quite frequently in the Arcturian star system. They are working with you now. They work, um, they work often with crop circles, all right? infusing information into the Earth, helping you. Um, the Earth is decoding it and, and representing it in crop circles. So the Arcturians are also involved with that as well. Some things that you're getting in the crop circles are also coming from Earth herself, frequencies and signatures that she wants you to know and remember. You don't have to know all the ins and outs about, the, about what is there in the image. As you focus on the image, you pick up on the overall vibration and you can decode it within yourself through the heart center, not through the mind. The mind can't handle all that extra information. The mind was designed to throw it all out so it could only see one version of reality, but the heart center can hold all of that data and process it. Is there something specific you want to know about them? Well, yesterday when I was talking to John, he said, who are you talking to? And the first thing that came to my mind was art turns. And then I said, what? And it said, arty. Yes. So that's why I was asking more. Um, Yes, so they'll, they'll work and check in quite often with, with many of you. Yes, and, you know, as we said, names um, sometimes have got a good sense of humor. So, uh, you know, we'll give you something that, that uh, perhaps puts a smile on your face and holds the frequency that we're looking for at the same time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So what else? Is the reason for connecting with our Akashic Records um, to assist us with what we have chosen to forget? Yes, in short. Um, but also not only what you have forgotten that you yourself have experienced that is part of your own blueprint, you can also go into the records and get information on things that you haven't experienced that you want to know more about. So it's not limited to just your own personal experience. You have the, the, uh, the access to all of the records of the whole, of all that ever was, ever has been, and ever will be. Take a breath on that one. You already have access to all that ever was, is, and ever will be. It's available to you. Now, having said that, there are other records that you will keep off limits to yourself because, again, it will spoil the game. There's a part of you that says, yes, I know all that stuff. The limited part of me down there doesn't, so uh, we're going to keep a lid on it. We're going to put a ceiling on, on the level of information just so that we don't spoil the entire game. Make sense? Yeah. Anything else? Too much information? I, I understood that the reason we aren't aware of all our past lives and all our other lives is it would be too hard to live this one? Yes, from where you're standing, yes, because you are trying to have a linear experience. Mm -hmm. And when you start getting all this extra data and you're processing life through the mind, yes, it can and put you into overwhelm because you don't know what to do with it. The majority of your lifetimes are rather simple. There's not a lot going on, and many of them you will have integrated already. It's the ones that tend to be the traumatic ones where something big has occurred, something dramatic, where the, 
you know, you committed suicide or you were murdered or uh, there was a love triangle or, you know, some of these things that sound pretty outrageous. That's in part why they, you know, you get all the drama lifetimes it's because those are the ones that haven't been integrated. That's where big stuff happened and you just couldn't work it all out. So you remember them as is required. Um, as you increase in frequency and you're able to handle that multidimensional sense of awareness, those start to bleed through so that you do see them and you just use them as another frame of reference. They aren't who you are in this moment. They're a part, but they aren't your soul identity. Your higher self, you as divine source, that is your identity. Now, some of you will, you know, you like to change your names. You like to reassign your identity to a being in another star system. But again, that is simply only an aspect of yourself. It isn't your true expanded self. So we caution you when you choose to do that. Take what resonates from that. But you also have to appreciate who you are now. Oftentimes that new identity is taken in an effort to abandon the old version of you because you don't like who you are. You haven't dealt with that version of you. So when you deal with that version of you and you love exactly who you are and also incorporate that expanded version of you, that's when you get closer and closer to your divine self. It's not by ignoring parts of you. Some of you don't like to look at the negative lifetimes that you've had when you've done some rather dastardly deeds. You like to think, oh no, I haven't had any negative lifetimes. I've only done the positive ones. Well, how boring. That would be boring. And you want to have a well-balanced experience of duality. So you have both experiences. So you've got to look at and accept all of who you are in order to connect with all of you, with the divine. You can't just separate part of yourself out. You can't parse it out that way. And that's not what this life is about. Again, it's about bringing all those different aspects of yourself in and loving each and every one. When you see it from the higher level that you created it and how it was of service, you know, you could have played a really dastardly deed so that someone else could have, uh, you know, played the victim. And they can't play that if no one will do that horrible deed. It just can't happen. Somebody's got to do it. And you get to have the experience of what that's like and then work your way through uh, or, you know, whatever you're holding on to. You all call it karma. Karma isn't exactly how you think it is, by the way. You don't have to stop at, start at the bottom and work your way up. You're already divine source energy. So how can you be anything but at the top? You've got this sense of hierarchy which is infused. It is part of the game. It is part of the, the du dualistic game. You've got all is one, and then the other extreme of that is hierarchy. All right, so even through all 12 dimensions, there, is, there are expressions of that. All right, but that's still an illusion, because once you go up to source level, all is one. Is your higher self your soul? Yes. You could frame it that way, yes. Anything else? Spirit and soul. Semantics. <laughs> um, uh, you might phrase it in a slightly different way. Uh, if you want to get really technical, um, we didn't want to get too much into this, but you can think of soul as your oversoul and then spirit in a way as your higher self. All right? Or and it doesn't really matter because none of these labels are really appropriate anyway. It's not really how it is, but we've got to give you some framework because you're in physical form and you're working through your mind. So. It has to have a word attached to it. Yes. Um, you could also think of it this way, that your soul is your higher self and then your personality, the qualities about yourself, your, your curiosity, your, um, your stubbornness, that could be spirit, right? The qualities that pass along from lifetime to lifetime. You could think of it that, that as spirit as well. So 
So is this is the spirit world a lower, a very much lower vibration? If you're talking about those who have not reintegrated, yeah. um, it's higher than where you are. All right, so it's um, they've gone up and they're no longer in physicality. They've extracted um, themselves from the physical vehicle. They just haven't reintegrated. They haven't gone above. They haven't gone any higher into um, the multidimensional realms. They're still associating themselves as an individual and disconnected. So they haven't expanded their awareness yet to see that they are reconnected. That's why you get ghosts or spirits who uh, are still connected to the earth, are connected to physical things. They just don't have the body because they've left the body. Um, but they haven't seen their expanded perception of self yet. So they are above your optic range for most of you, but they're still beneath the veil. They're still uh, not up to the fourth dimensional level. They haven't reconnected. And there's nothing wrong with that. Soul's going to get there when the soul's going to get there. That's a whole other experience. To be a disc incarnate soul. So, you know, we encourage souls to, to move forward, to move on, because they're in, most of them are in distress. They're still in fear. Which is what's keeping them from reintegration. Once they let go of that, and that identity, that unique identity of, of separation then they reintegrate. But that's still a unique experience and we honor their free will. If we come across them, is it helpful to, to guide them? You can, Light yes. Or yes. Send them love. Yeah. Because, again, the part that keeps them separate is the sphere. So if you're sending them love, they can tap into that frequency of love, mm -hmm. which will allow them to once again reintegrate. Yeah, so you can, and you can direct them that way, but really it's the love vibration that you send them, the unconditional love that, that helps them the most. And again, you know, especially if you're around lower level entities, um, there's no need to fear them. It's simply the projection of love will assist them to send them away, one or the other. All right? Anything else? Well, we're very excited for you as you continue with your journey. And again, we thank you for the service that you're providing for us, how you are leading us, how you are guiding us, how you are providing a tremendous service. Because as you go through this ascension process, you will shift the universal game. This is not just about Earth going through the ascension process and that's it. As you learn these new skills you will share the information holographically and when that information is out to the entire universe it is impossible but to shift the universal game that's how important this grand experiment of earth is and that's why there are so many of us who are watching and observing what's going on because it's going to affect the entire universe take a breath and here you thought you were just working on your own little life. <laughs> well, that's really all you have to focus on. You don't have to worry about the big game. Just deal with what's coming up for you in the moment. That's the big secret. Be present. Be grounded. And that's all you're going to have to do. So, dear one. As always, if you need assistance, you can call on us at any time. There is no need for an intermediary. You simply have to ground yourselves in your bodies, get yourself heart-centered, set your intent, ask your question, trust what you get, and we will be sure to make sure that you receive the information. So until then, we are sending much light, much love, much support, and many well wishes. Ah, pleasure.